Hello and welcome back to Food Night UK and this week we've got nothing short of a legend. Jazz Coleman's joining us on the show to talk about hot sauce and music and all stops in between. Yeah. Keep it locked. Well, good, right. Well, I just thought to say thank you for having me here. It's the first time I've ever done an interview about a chili sauce. I and a uh, tasting sort of like this, you know. Uh, so thank you. Right. It's a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. <laughs> it's a beautiful day to tell to you guys. We've been waiting for this day a long time. Just Coleman's on the show. Yes, indeed. And uh, we've been working on this one for a while. And we're so happy about this. And as you know, at Food Night, we're always giving presents. And it's usually hot sauce. This time, our guest has made his own hot sauce. So, we've got a different present. Oh, what the hell? I spoke to your manager uh -huh. about things that you like. Uh, okay. So, this is what she wants to nick off me. She wouldn't tell me what it was. Oh, yeah. Well, just... Okay, well, you open it. I'm, All right. I, I okay. trash things. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've done oh, right number so on this. of you. Whatever. There we go. Right. Uh -huh. It is. A tea set. Oh my god, she that's told amazing. Me that you like tea. I right. love tea. This is special tea. This is made by a black metal band who wow. I called the Infernal Sea. Wow. So they made the Infernal Tea. <laughs> and that is for Jazz Coleman, along with a suitably satanic teapot that it goes in, which is this is oh, what Carla is wanted. So wicked. I can see why she tried to nick it off me now. Uh, it's got She's not hand, having though. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so that's fantastic. Oh, well, that's amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you no, so much. Talk. It's amazing. We heard oh. you like tea. We couldn't mess oh, it up. Oh, I'm going to have to pad that up so that um, yeah. it doesn't get bashed up. Um, yeah. Oh. Go on, you put it back in the box, Pop. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just pop it on this seat here. There we are. Right, that's for you to take on your tour bus. Amazing, 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 amazing. Well, thank you so much for that. No problem at all, no problem at all. Oh. Right, the reason why we're here, this stuff. You'll have seen it on the show before. I reviewed it with Julian Cope's guitarist, Chris, earlier on in the series. We both gave it a nine out of 10. I gave it a 10 out of 10, actually, but there you go. Does he like it? Loved it, loved it. He was a bit of a connoisseur for this sort of thing, and he said the same things I said. He loved the garlic hit in it the garlic sort of base notes in it, and then uh, with the uh, uh, pomegranate and the molasses. Th that's, that's right. The sweetness there. And then yeah, you've got the, right. the triple chili Oh, I know. There. I mean, it's just great on your eggs in the morning. I know some, all the road crew have been uh, been getting into it hard. And uh, I don't have any of these uh, these bottles for myself, so I'm going to go to the chili sauce shop. And, Thank you uh, so much. And uh, look at that, yeah. And I'm going to get a, a bottle for each of the guys in the band who have not tasted my chili sauce yet. Right. Well, there you have it. Uh, yeah. Oh, treat. this is looking good. Like, should we start off with um, go. one of the um, one of the other ones? Yeah. Right. This is um, Cold Wings' own brand. There we are. And uh, it's called Make It Burn. And this is made by Thick Sources out of Leeds. See what you think of that. Little double D, yeah? Ooh, it's pokey, I can smell. It's it's a right. good one. It's not complete headbanger. Hmm, I'll try a bit on here. Yeah, just give it a little dab. Won't go too well with it. Whoa! <laughs> right. Okay. Mm. Oh, wow, that's a heroic dab. Right, I've got to match that. Mm. Oh, yeah, there we are. Hmm. 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 <laughs> Pokey number. That's on the uh, higher end of the uh, scale. Ghost chili. Uh, I think there's a bit of Reaper in there. I can feel a bit of Reaper in there. There is a bit of Reaper in there. You can always tell a Reaper to get that back of the throat hit. Nice. Yeah. Liking that? You know, it's about an eight and a half. Eight and a half. That's that's high high praise. I mean in heat. Oh in, in heat. Oh yeah. Um yeah, it's it hits you and then it goes again. It's not a lingerer. Mm. It's just a little bit on the hot side. Yeah, it's a pokey one, isn't it? Mm. But I like it. Is it Woo! Oh, nice. We're alive. Bring it on. Next up, 
This is your source. You should be well mm. acquainted with this one. I am. Um, but only recently. I saw it before I'm... I've only just been getting to know it myself. Right. I did one tasting. Mm. And then I forgot all about it. <laughs> well, I've not, not been able to get a hold of a copy, um, a bottle of this myself. Because it's sold out everywhere, I know. That's, and it's made by um, Hot Heads, friends of the show. They've, uh, they've featured us once or twice on our videos, which is very, very, very appreciated. Right. And they're the people who are going to be doing my new mustard, which you know Absolutely. about. Absolutely. We heard Coleman's about mustard. Of course, it won't be the. The yellow coloured bottles because uh, oh you're not going that far. I don't have uh, you know, I don't want a lawsuit. <laughs> um, yeah, That'd be excellent publicity. Oh. Mm. Oh, I forgot good. how much I like that. And I'm going to mm. do a, a, my new one's going to be a mango. Mm. A mango uh, a hot sauce. One. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, there's a, I've, I've noticed there's been a bit of a trend recently for people putting like more of the sweeter end of things like papaya and pineapple, mango, things like that in. Mm -hmm. And it always works. It does work. I mean, this one's got um, maple syrup in it, a little mm. bit of maple syrup. It, it just kicks it off, you know? I think it's a beautiful sauce because mm. it's it's what I call a tingly heat. Yeah. It's not overpowering. It's not like, it's not killing your taste buds and it goes exceptionally well with beef. I've tried it with a few things. It goes really well with beef. Does it? Awesomely with beef. So uh, most, most beef, excellent with. Um, really enjoyed that. Once again, triumph. Love it. Oh, lovely. It's a very complex sauce as well, but what it has got is balance. It's mm. got beautiful balance, so as much of a kick as it's got from them chilies, it chills it out with the uh, with the sweetness. Lovely. Have you ever tried those um, jalapeno poppers? Yes, love them. They go great with beer, don't they? Beer. I used to drink yeah. beer. Yeah. I don't drink anymore. Mm. But, um, uh, you know, there's jalapenos, what they, uh, the stuff with cream cheese. Yeah. And then the pan fried or something yeah. like this. Um, they're just fantastic, aren't they're they? They're great. I have them when I'm watching movies. Oh. Pick away at them. Love them. Fantastic, mm. fantastic. So, it would be very amiss of me not to talk about music. This morning, I was out on my morning exercise and all that, where I always listen to my music. I don't know. It just works for me. I need to be out on a walk to listen to music. Right. And I popped on Pylon. Oh, yeah. Love it. Absolutely love it. As I, as I told you last night, although you guys weren't privy to this conversation, um, I got into Killing Joke through Pandemonium. Pandemonium right. was my go-to. I oh. loved that record. I lived in that record. Brilliant. How old were you when you heard that? 1993, so I would have been 15, 16. Oh, God, you knew. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was playing in punk bands, and then I heard Pandemonium, and I thought, I might have a go with these samplers and synths and stuff, see what's going on with that. And uh, 30 years later, I've made a career out of it. So, so yeah, it was between Pandemonium and um, Nine Inch Nails Pretty Hate Machine. That kind of flips the way I thought about music. Right. Really. And still to this day, I still make breakbeat music. I've been lucky in my life. Um, I mean, I've just, I was born into a liberal family when my parents basically, they were strict. They say, what do you want to do? Well, me, it was music, spirituality, breeding moths and things like this. And then my parents would say, right, now you're going to really study it. Mm. You choose what you want to do, but you have to really study it. Yeah. So I was very lucky then. By the time I got to the age of 14, I smoked my first joint and I thought, this sucks. Mm. Hey, I mean, I don't want to go to university. I don't want to do further education. I don't even want to con complete my school studies. Right. Uh, and I remember that first chunk, and I thought, I'm going to stop everything, and I'm going to form a band. Right. And that was it. I had that realization. And um, I did a bit of weed dealing, very proud of it. <laughs> and uh, apart from that, I've never had a job. Right. Well, I mean, that, that's awesome, isn't it? I mean, and we're glad of that because uh, Killing Joke, what a band, what a legacy. Uh, what, you know, I mean, do, do you ever allow yourself when you're back in New Zealand and you, do you allow yourself to sit and look at everything you've achieved and think, wow? No, no I don't do that. I don't no. really, I don't really um, spend too much time thinking about those things. I'm, I'm more interested in 
what we're going to do next. You can tell that. Yeah. I mean, in the last two weeks, I got really lucky. I've, I've just become um, director of orchestra de la Suisse Romaine. Now I'm a director of a, an orchestra. So you, it's incredible. a long way from uh, being a drug dealer <laughs> to becoming uh, <laughs> a director of orchestra, you know. Yeah. And now I'm going to conduct four times a year. That's incredible. So I'm, I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. And, uh, and of course, my duties with Killing Joke, I take them seriously, you know. Mm. Now I'm just going to say, um, the difference between us, our band and other bands is, we've always operated like a gang. Yes. I mean, when, when we first started as teenagers, you know, um, someone was always uh, dealing dope. Somebody was uh, uh, raiding fruit machines. We had this like mm. system where we could go into an amusement arcade right. and we could empty all the machines. Right. We had this. We had this piece we called it a trim. We said, sort of make a hole in the side of Bell fruit machines right. and stick the wire in and keep and keep one of the keep one of the reels in one position there and just right. empty the machine like this. And, and it was one person's duty to empty out all, one arcade <laughs> uh, each day. And it, we, we, we swapped the things oh, and cool. we lived in squats. <laughs> and, uh, um, and we were a gang. Yeah. We function as a gang. I, 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 I make uh, no apologies about it. No. You know, we always had a, an electrician with us or Geordie. So when we get into a squat, we get the electricity on, and we always find a way. Andy, around these, around these things, That's you know. Amazing. Yeah, that is and so we cool. still function like this. We still think like that and function like this. I mean, That's we're amazing. all in our sixties now. There's like uh, two hundred and fifty years between us all. Right. You know, uh, uh, and uh, it's amazing being with the same guys that you were teenagers with. I'm, I, I rejoice in it every day. Not and, many bands can say uh, that. Uh, and. Uh, Paul, Geordie and Youth are like my dearest brothers, they're my brothers and I yeah. love them dearly. And I love all the people around our band. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're a roadie and you work for Killing Joe, it's like getting your colors. Yes. Uh, you know, like we're a fucking hard band to work for. If you can like survive a tour with Killing Joe, you must be some kind of person. Right. Yeah, you know, you must be a strong person to do That's that. That's awesome. And uh, so we're, uh, and when I think about it, when I stop to think about it, all the things we, we've achieved as a band, and yeah, sure, I'm, I'm proud of it. And um, like, you know, like a, a year or so ago, as everybody knows, I, I, I had a near-death experience. And, uh, and uh, when, I, when I came back, I realized that I've got a real important role with Killing Joe. Yeah. At this time in history, we, Killing Joke was born for this time. Absolutely. Uh, like, and to, uh, like, even if I, even if I hadn't been in Killing Joke and Killing Joke were there now, I, I'd be a gatherer. Absolutely. You know, I would have found Killing Joke, and this Absolutely. is the band that represents represents everything a band should be. Absolutely. You make you the know? music you want yeah, to hear. We split everything equally. Absolutely. You know, there's no greed problems in the band and this kind of thing and. I feel very proud uh, of um, what we've done and um, I feel very close to our people. I'm really looking forward to um, the Royal Albert Hall next year. I mean, that's a wow. big deal for us, that's you know, especially at the after, after show party. Are you coming? Oh, I am now. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, I, I'm so looking forward to wow. it uh, because it's a milestone. And I can remember, yeah, I mean, youth's the one in our band that's always like been big on milestones. When we were teenagers, it's like your first New York gig, uh, your first time headlining, and these kind of things that you, you just you knock them off one by one as you go through the year. Well, there, here we are, like uh, in our 60s, and, and we sold out the Albert Hall. That's and incredible. That, and, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's great, you that's know. That's going to be a moment. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Yeah, it, it sure it is. Wow. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's if we get there. I mean, I'm hoping that, uh, hoping that we can, like, uh, things don't escalate too fast. No, that, that we're facing World War III yeah. is, is, is real and terrifying because it's not like it's a war, it's mm. extinction exactly. that, we're, that we're talking about. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you can hear it. This this sense of urgency, this this call to arms, you can hear it on Pylon, the latest record. It sounds urgent. It sounds like 
it's an emergency call. It's, it sounds like that's what it says to me. To my listening, like, it sounds like every there's there's not a bit of muscle wasted on it. It's it's very direct. Our, very whole, to the our whole career has been this. We've been uh, the, the world that we're in now. Uh, it, the first two albums mm. uh, basically reflected what was going to come mm. eventually. We, I had, as my mother is, is testament to uh, uh, my visions mm. of um, nuclear war and mm. and this slavery that we're in now. I've, I've had them for the best part of my life and mm. I've had these nightmares. I mean, mm. I get terrible dreams that come true. And the, what I do is I kind of knock out my dreams um, because I don't want to see them a lot of the time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, like I was mentioning Pandemonium earlier, there's tracks on there which have come true. You know, Millennium, for instance, and like, you know, the, the entire feel of the album, and it predated the Millennium by seven years. Um, absolutely spot on. I mean, spot on musically, but spot on in a lot of senses. It was a fantastic well, When I was um, uh, an 18 year old, uh, I read uh, the book by Brzezinski that came out in, in 1970 called Between Two Worlds. And in this book, Brzezinski basically outlined technocracy, mm. the coming technocracy. And when I met Big Paul, it was in a house that was owned by the Tavistock Institute, and it was all Tavistock people in that house. And those people, um, basically, well, at least one of the people in that house, they, 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 they'd signed the official secret act. They were called, they called themselves industrial psychologists. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had a good idea when we were teenagers of what, what was coming, because of the people that were, were actually around us mm. uh, at that, that time. Uh, like, you know, when, when our lives are, uh, are ruled by corporations, this is fascism. This is the fascism my my father fought against in the last war. Fascism, mm. and now it's here, ruled by corporations. It, it, it is is here with us, and uh, and uh, and I hate it. You know, my my life is over. Uh, so the thing that makes me dangerous now is I don't give a fuck. Hey, don't give a fuck. So. Um, I'm glad that I'm, I'm moving to Switzerland so I can be closer to Klaus. <laughs> that is awesome. And I think that is where we're, we're going to call it a day right now because me and Giles are going to go see an old friend of the uh, show. We're going to go around and see Chili, uh, Chili Shop Leeds. Frank down there, he's going to show Giles around and show his wonderful chilli collection. And I'm going to buy a load of chilli sauces. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, let's make I've the most I've got one gig it. to go tonight. Tomorrow I'll be in my private bar smoking strong weed. Can't say fairer than that. <laughs> <laughs> we have a great mind, like Einstein. When we roll up, short time. Me lyrically blessed with some sick crime. To get me going, I'm going to hear a bass line. Deep down bass, subwoofer bass. What's your perfect I mean, I'm all mine. some shit, gangsta shit. Jungle bitch with one foot scan to eat. So when bass hit, you can't feel pain. Hatred, bass are where me bring up, me repair. Me now complain from the dirty bass line. We now refrain. Next week, we've got the Kings of Metal Tour. Very tomorrow, going to be on the show. Be sure to tune in for that one. You don't want to miss it. And if you like what you're watching there, please subscribe down there.